So, well, welcome, all of you. Thank you very much for coming and uh, to, to our second hack show here in, in Barcelona. Uh, and thank you for our amazing you know, uh, cohort that we have uh, in, in, that, in that occasion. So, well, I, I hope there's a lot of people as well in, you know, on streaming uh, seeing us and watching the, 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 the hack show. And let me just introduce a little bit about uh, about Iron Hack, no, and what uh, these guys here and and uh, and the five person that will uh, present the their projects, what they do, what they did these eight weeks, no. Um, I think uh, basically it's um, what they did is to learn uh, how to how to construct. Uh, digital products. No, you will see how amazing that the the product that they were uh, they they were uh, you constructing, and 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 probably uh, you will you will enjoy, and you will think uh, how cool could be to to have these real projects uh, as a as a products, no, and and online, and and it's easy how how they how they they learn this. Well, it's easy now that we. We see in a, in a different perspective, but this is the different things that they learn in the different weeks, no? And and I think it's fascinating uh, the, the the capacity and and how different they are now, and and how we remember when we we got the, the first interviews. Uh, I I think I, I was in the process of all of them, and uh, it's 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 they are like different. Uh, people, so so, uh, what they are now as developers. So so, congratulations for that. No? Um, and I think the the most important thing about uh, how how is the process uh, of learning in in Ironhack is is easy as well. I mean, uh, we are trying to be really innovative with uh, with um, uh, methodologies we are using. Welcome, people. Welcome, Ching. Uh, you can sit down here. We have some free slots. Yeah, please. Yeah. So it's easy, no? Uh, they learn by coding. Uh, I think that that's that's the first thing uh, uh, that we we try to 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 have in our in our boot camp and in all the hours we expend here. Uh, what they what they do is code, uh, and then the second and the third thing is code as well. So they spend time uh, and time and time coding and coding and coding again. No, it's like a loop. So, and, and we think that's that's the the, the the best way to to learn to do real things. No, uh, just practicing, learning. But but I mean the most important thing is to learn from from the best. No, uh, and, and learn from from real developers, uh, from people who is all the day uh, programming. The most important thing: people who knows how to mentor other people, uh, uh, people that uh, come from from companies uh, or has uh, they have been working on amazing companies or like a freelance Carlos Ble or Mark. So they they are using and they are super updated with the last technologies uh, that we are uh, teaching here as well. No. And for sure, they they have uh, an amazing help because uh, we we want to go really fast. We want to learn a lot, so they they need more help. So they got that help from that incredible super heroes. No, that they spent the the last eight weeks uh, working really hard, even the nights, thinking about how to improve, and how to help more. So thank you very much to our TAs and cross teachers because they were here. The the eight weeks doing a a big job, no? so so congratulations, no, uh, for sure, no, to the mentors, uh, probably all of them are really proud of the help they got from from their mentors. Uh, they were uh, expanding the last two weeks doing that project, but they got the the um, the help of of one mentor that I think it's super important to focus on. On the scope uh, and the, the the final goals of, of, of your project, no. Uh, 
For sure, no. I think one important thing as well here is the people that come from the from the uh, Barcelona environment uh, to talk with us, to know them, uh, hope to hire some of them uh, to because for sure, no. In the in the in that world, uh, it's super important the, the networking that you have, all the uh, contacts that you that you that you have. So, so I hope uh, it was. It was uh, great to know that people and the companies that they are representing. No, uh, we have a lot of different uh, companies, and for sure, it's different knowledge that uh, came here to to our campus in the in the makers of Barcelona. And if anyone is asking about, can I learn that? So I think the best option is to ask to that people when we finish the the boot camp. Uh, I know they have uh, an special mind uh, and they are great people, but I mean, I think that the most important thing is the motivation. You have to be really motivated because when you start the first day, you are super scared, uh, then you are super frustrated, then you feel that need um, uh, help, you are lost, but the motivation is what uh, all they have and what they didn't. Uh, lose so for sure no um, just I think the most important thing here is the last one if you want to learn what these people uh, learn you have to apply you you have to pass our process you have to pass the pre-work but sure you have to pass the the eight weeks so the eight weeks are the things that uh, you are going to to see uh, this evening, this afternoon. So they, it's true that they represent the five top projects, but all the projects here are super important. But because one other thing that we have in this kind of education and in this kind of boot camps is how they help one to other, one each other. So I think the five top projects are the, probably the most complete projects uh, we had in the in the boot camp, but I, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I, I saw the the other projects this morning, and they are all amazing. I mean, they had all incredible things, graphical things, amazing backend things, uh, code, amazing. So congratulations! No? Uh, here you have the the five most complete projects. But I mean, uh, I was scared this morning uh, watching the, the 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 other projects. So. Congratulations, uh, all of you, uh, and I want to to present one by one uh, all of them, and especially because here we have their T-shirts, because that's that's only that only happen if you are a really Iron Hack member. So the first one is Agnieszka. So congratulations. <laughs> The other one, it doesn't matter. You have to change that. <laughs> Alfred Roca, congratulations, man! Congratulations. I want for you, <laughs> Christina, our Miami girl. Congratulations as well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> T-shirt. Emily, our New York girl. Congratulations as well. Oh, to the teachers. One, two, one. <laughs> Heidi, congratulations as well. You did it. <laughs> Ilya, congratulations as well. You got it. Jordi Domingo, congratulations as well. Caroline, congratulations. And the last one, Sebas, congratulations as well. So let's go with the, with the presentations of the projects and remember that then We'll have a, a special keynote. Uh, thank you so much to Sergio for, for, for coming. 
uh, Sergio will will explain a lot of interesting things the the career as developer. So uh, when when they finish their projects, uh, remember to stay here and and enjoy enjoy for sure it. No, and that's all. Uh, enjoy the show and enjoy the, the the hack show. Thank you very much. All right, hello everyone. Lucky me first. <laughs> um, my name is Emily Chen and I hail from Seattle, Washington in the United States, but I've actually been living in Brooklyn, New York for the last two years. Um, I came to Iron Hack because I've been working in the software industry as a quality assurance engineer for a while now and I've been dabbling in coding for many more years longer than that but I've never really reached a point in my skill level where I felt like I could build the things that I wanted to build. So Iron Hack seemed like a wonderful opportunity to fill in the gaps of my knowledge and truly understand how a big software project comes together. So my project is called Fourth Wall and it's a review site for business to business transactions or relationships. I came up with the idea because I have a friend in New York City who owns a small developer shop, and every time we go out for dinner, he's telling me about some new client who we did a website for, and they just didn't pay him. I just think that is horrible and ridiculous, and I feel like there should be a way to hold these people accountable besides suing them. They should get a reputation hit as well, and a review site seemed like the easiest way to achieve that. So my site is built on <laughs> Ruby on Rails, and I used PostgreSQL for my um, database and Heroku for my production servers. Uh, front end, of course, you can't build a site without JavaScript and CSS, but I used Haml for my templates, and I chose Bourbon Neat for my framework. I chose Bourbon Neat because I knew from the start that I wanted to do all my styles from scratch, and Bourbon provides a, a very lightweight, uh, responsive grid framework and that's about it. Some other technologies I used were sorcery for authentication. I chose it because I worked with devise before which is the other popular option and I wanted to have profile pictures and company logos so I used paperclip and because Heroku won't let you store your images there I chose to use a Dropbox plugin to store all my images. And then for testing I used RSpec and Factory Girl and Faker to create test data. And then a little bit about my process. I kept track of my product backlog on Trello. I filed tickets and used um, the ver version control of GitHub. And I did my wireframes with trusty pen and paper. All right, so now let me demo it for you. All right, so this is my main page. As you can see, the most important thing on the page 
is this large search field. Obviously, if you're coming to the site, you're going to be coming because you're either looking for an existing company or you want to add a review for a company. So I feel like the search box is the most important thing and it should have been most prominent. You can also click just below it where it says view all to see a list of all the companies. Um, I built a little autocomplete feature using jQuery and Ajax and it just returns the top five results in the order of how many reviews they have. But I'm just going to do a search for A because then we'll have more stuff to look at. And the internet is being slow. Come on. Okay, well, I'm going to, I can switch to my local version. That'll work. Sorry for the delay. I was really hoping we'd have internet. <laughs> oh, really? There. All right, let's try again. There. All right, so now you can see a list of my search results uh, for nothing. And for each company, I have a little information about the company, uh, where they're from, the number of reviews, how m their average star rating, and the how likely people are to want to work with them again. And these are, again, ordered by how many reviews the company has. And at the top here, you can add a company. So I'll just do that really quick to show you. Not going for accuracy with these fields. <laughs> okay, so this is what the page looks like if you add a new company. Um, you can see, I mean, there's not a lot to look at right now, but up in the corner here, under the big write a review button, it says claim this company. I wanted owners to have the opportunity to respond to any reviews that they got. So if you are associated with a company, you can send a request and an admin will review it to see if you're truly associated with them and then you can uh, leave responses. But I'm going to go to a different company that has a little more to look at. Uh, oops. <laughs> that was really good. All right, so this is what a company page will usually look like. Uh, at the top, we have the company information, how many reviews they have, and then you can see right below a list of all the reviews. So at the top we have the title and whether or not the thumbs up represents that this person would like to work with the company again. Uh, a little description, some ratings based on various issues, and then you can mark here if you thought the review was helpful. Right that. And I use a little Ajax and JavaScript to make that happen. And then you can also flag a review if it's inappropriate. Um, you can also see at the top here, <laughs> Can't point there. At the top there, <laughs> uh, it tells you how many people found this review helpful. And then right below um, the, the feedback options, you can see a response from the company owner. Uh, so now let me show you the process of adding a review. <laughs> Keeping it simple. There we go. All right, uh, so next I'm going to show you a user profile. This person um, is an, a company owner, so you can see they have a bit extra information. At the top, there's a list of all the companies that they're associated with, and then below is a list of all their reviews. So if you're a regular user, you just see the review section. The other part wouldn't be there. And you also have the option to edit details and then change your password on the left side here. and then. I mentioned earlier that you have the opportunity to respond to reviews. So if you click more, you can see here that I've already left a, 
a little response, but I can update it. There we go, and it updates. Thanks again to Ajax. All right, so let's see here. Mm. Uh, so that's the basics of the site. I did mention that I built it to be responsive, so I'll give you a quick little view of the mobile version. It's a little small and hard to see, but this is what it looks like on an iPhone 4S, which is my sorry phone. Oh, no. Tragedy. <laughs> right. Uh, there we go, and there's a profile. Okay. Eh, back to the slides. All right, so there were a few major challenges that I encountered while building this, building this app. Uh, one was that I decided to do my styles from scratch. I really, truly underestimated how much work that would be. I spent a lot a lot of time obsessing over colors and making things align than I would have, than would have been ideal. Um, and also I'd wanted to make it, uh, build it mobile first, but I didn't really understand what that meant. So I did a lot of styling code and then I ended up having to rewrite it three days later when it turned out it wasn't really any good. And then the other thing was I was using that sorcery gem for my authentication. I didn't I ran into a few roadblocks when I tried to use that with RSpec because I didn't know how to make them work together. And that was probably the most annoying problem that took me too long and had a really simple solution. All right, so next steps. I would really like to build some integration tests for it. I am a tester by background and it just kills me not to have those. Um, I'd like to add some content to the site based on the data I'm gathering. So maybe a list of the top five companies to work for and the top worst companies to work for. And then some analytics to my admin dashboard because who doesn't want to see little numbers tick up? Uh, yeah, so overall it's been a really amazing eight weeks. I cannot believe that it's already coming to an end, my time in Barcelona. Um, and I learned so much. I think the most important thing I learned, though, was that you could have a project that seems completely overwhelming and impossible, and if you break it down in the tiny, tiny bits and just do what you know is the very next step, and you just keep doing that one step at a time, eventually you'll turn out exactly where you hoped you would be. And that's incredibly satisfying. <laughs> so. Thank you all very much for coming here to watch us. Um, thank you, Nick and Xavier, for being wonderful mentors. And I'm benching them in alphabetical order because they were both extremely helpful over the last few weeks. My R and Hack family, I'm going to really miss you guys. <sighs> and then my wonderful mentor, Nisha, who really pushed me to do my best and kept me honest with my code. So thank you all. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, we have time for questions. So, who's the first? Questions? Technical questions? Come on. Martin. <laughs> People? Yeah, here. Hi. So my, my question is, if you, uh, you know, you build this thing and you, you know, you, you start a business out of this uh, idea, which is, by the way, a wonderful, we badly need that. <laughs> so um, how, how, how are you going, how are you going to know that the reviews are, you know, legged? Like because, you know, I can, you know, I can trust some company's name because I hate them or whatever, or maybe I'm passive aggressive or something. So <laughs> how are you going to control both sides that you are not going to end up with a cat fight with, you know, with someone telling this company is total crap because they don't pay and the other part telling you, you know, as a tool, is going. I think we need this kind of tools, but 
I cannot figure out how to take the stupid humans out, out of the equation. That's my question. How, how are you going to, to manage that or have you thought about that? So. Yeah, I definitely, I've definitely been thinking about that and it's a really difficult problem to solve. Uh, one thing I thought of was maybe restricting the kind of people who can make accounts to be like a company or organizational email address. And the other thing is moderation might be a pretty heavy burden for this site, so, yeah. More questions? More questions? Here. Um, what's the name of that, um, that, it was it an application or a website? Uh, they're kind of used interchangeably. These oh, days, right. I, I see. So um, what's it called again? Fourth Wall. Fourth Wall. It's a... Uh, my brother-in-law named it. It's the barrier mm -hmm. between the audience and the performers when oh, you're at a play. Okay. And he thought that my app was kind of breaking down a barrier. Of sort. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, you can always ask me questions after. <laughs> no more questions. So thank you very much, Emily. Congrats. <laughs> Hello. Wait. Where are you pressing? No, for uh. Like this? To move. No. Wait. If not, it is automatic. You have to change with the. Uh, Hello, I'm Ilya. I came from a completely different industry. I'm from airline and quite passionate about everything uh, related to aviation. And of course, I uh, would like to present you the project. It's called uh, avbill.io. Uh, it will be a flexible air cargo management API. Uh, so all of you have probably seen uh, significant changes in recent years in the aviation industry. You all remember these paper tickets for which you have to go to travel agency to print it and all other stuff. And now with a couple of clicks on your mobile phone, you can travel all over. So and in air cargo business, it's uh, slightly more burdens. And uh, let's say it's not so user friendly at the moment. So we was uh, talking a bit about this and decided that why not to use something user friendly. And uh, part of this there is a lot of opportunities, a lot of empty spaces. For example on flights from Barcelona and uh, out of Barcelona as well. So there is really a lot of uh, possibilities for transit shipments. Uh, so uh, there might be some, some different opportunities in this market. Well, uh, just to explain, uh, airway bill, it's an um, industry-wide abbreviation for airway bill for travel document. It's like a ticket for, for shipment, for cargo. So we talked to my friend, idea looks good, can be workable, what next? So here I find, uh, I think it's a perfect solution, it's iron hack, appreciate it a lot find myself completely in a different environment. For example, in presentation in uh, our industry, we always have in ties, wearing. <laughs> Here is not obligatory. And uh, all the rest is completely different. So really, let's say, friendly environment. And uh, so just uh, 
a couple of examples about iron hack to explain in one word. Who understands what is written here? It's actually a nice uh, Korean poetry. And this one. Small one, exactly, it's JavaScript. So for me, both of them was more or less similar <laughs> eight weeks ago. I haven't seen a lot of differences. And uh, actually, a lot of stuff changed in recent two months. It doesn't mean that I've learned Korean in these weeks, but uh, JavaScript looks much more familiar and not afraid anymore. So back to the project. Oh, it's uh, demo time. Excuse me, I need some help here too. What you have it on ground? Oh yeah, okay. But is it? oh nice, it's fit on the screen. So basically the idea was to build API. So you see the nice black and white website <laughs> without any CSS at all. And uh, I will explain afterwards why it built like this. But uh, it has the most important features, which is already implemented. So it's quite simple. We have flights, we have sh movements, and we have shipments. So the basic tool which, which is needed. Uh, and some, uh, some very important and viable functions. For example, find uh, different connections. So. We can use as many stops as, as we want, just to see the right route for the shipment. There is actually no limitation, but common sense tells us that something more than four is not necessary. But for the purpose of testing, we, we have, let's say, even more of them. So, and it worked it work perfectly. So it can, can find from the database of the flights almost all the possible connections, then uh, we can adjust it due to our necessity with uh, shipment size, with uh, other properties. So, and this uh, base to build further on kind of, let's say, user-friendly interface. The oh, okay, yeah. Actually, the important one is this one. So you get all the data in a JSON format. So this application uh, could be used further on to build, let's say, later on, a very nice and very user-friendly front-end application with JavaScript easily using all the necessary data which, which is already available here. Okay, one second, please. So you can immediately continue further on with booking. Test. And that's it. It automatically selected the flights necessary and automatically send in booking request for airlines. So even for strange routes like this. Anyhow, and actually it's, it's working, so I appreciate a lot that I uh, can see all the movements, all the shipments, and of course we'll implement further functions later on. For the moment it's just something like 10% of the application is more or less uh, implemented. There is a lot of ideas uh, to build on, and I hope to, to build it in the nearest future, and finding, let's say, collaborators and anybody who wish to participate, both building the API itself and the front end as well. So if anybody will be interested to join the project anytime, please, please welcome. And a few more words about, um, excuse me, cow. I'm really fighting with this projector because it's, how you done it? <laughs> yeah? Nice. 
You see, we have a lot of things still to study. <laughs> okay, here is basically the structure. So here the API we were talking about. So it can communicate directly with uh, airlines, receiving the messages in the standard industry-wide format. Uh, of course, uh, we will receive some data for tracking shipments from airport cargo terminals as well. So uh, forwarders, exporters, specifically small and medium-sized uh, companies and entrepreneurs could uh, use the either API or uh, there is a space for future front-end application. It should be here. It's not visible yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, important one is uh, for communication, we used uh, industry-based proven solution like IATA standards. So we're not inventing bicycle. We're using, let's say, the existing formats. Uh, of course, we consider that there will be a possibility for connection for all the uh, participants from the industry, for all the stakeholders. And maybe at the later stage we can implement also the necessary uh, part with uh, import and export custom declarations. Ah, here it is, finally. That's a future front-end <laughs> application. Okay, a few words about uh, technologies and tools. Of course, Rails. Uh, of course, uh, GitHub, which helps really a lot. And uh, we studied here not only programming, but the workflow which used in the real world, which we find really helpful uh, testing. Personally, I've not done a lot of testing, but at least I understand the necessity of this one and hope uh, later on it will be the, the necessary part of it one. And Stack Overflow, I cannot not mention it here. <laughs> I find the answer almost to everything at this site. Okay, um, uh, one more method. <laughs> well, all teachers uh, always say that it is not recommended. <laughs> but I need to show it, it's kind of practical tool. Well, and there is some funny stuff as well. So I managed to get this uh, error message from Rails. <laughs> Cannot visit airport. I don't know what it means. And I hardly cannot repeat it again. <laughs> so we have some funny stuff during our study as well. So uh, guys, really, I would like to say thanks a lot to Ironhack team, to teachers, to teacher assistants, and uh, of course to my colleagues, because uh, a lot of stuff uh, we learn here is uh, from, from our colleagues. And one small but very interesting episode. Uh, one of the uh, students asked me to explain the problem he found, which I solved recently. When I start explaining the problem to him, after one minute, I understand the problem myself. <laughs> so it was really an interesting experience. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks you. Thanks again. And uh, if you will be interested to join, please feel free to contact. <laughs>
how it will look like and will it work fast or not with uh, large flight numbers. But we hope everything could be resolved. More questions? All the same time? You have, you got a question? Yeah. More questions? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. It's interesting, actually. You yeah. can ask. <laughs> he needs questions. Here. For, for defining your API, did you use any API specification tools? No. Okay. <laughs> No, I actually need to, to think uh, about how to structure it correctly. So for the moment, the time was quite limited. So I was focusing to make it work at the moment, to have at least something to present tonight. So that was the focus. Last one. One, two, three. No more questions? So congratulations, man. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Christina Dismanian. I'm from Miami, Florida. Um, I have absolutely no development background whatsoever. I am just an extremely avid internet user who was very curious about the way things worked. And I applied to Iron Hack and pretty much came here on a whim. So <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys know of or about digital maps. Um, this is an example of the digital map of New York. They're basically maps that um, point out where the digital companies, startups, tech investment companies, uh, sorry, <laughs> um, and co-working spaces like Mob are located in a city. Particularly with New York, they paired up with the city of New York to get the data because um, the city of New York really wanted to uh, kind of push the tech industry up and just so, you know, Silicon Valley can't hog all the talent. And it actually ended up working for them because uh, New York has had a huge surge in tech, in tech companies. So, um, sorry. I would like to do that with my city, Miami. Actually, um, Miami has had venture capital investments in tech triple over the past few years. And um, it's pretty much almost at the same level as Austin, which is a huge tech hub. And uh, Miami's the seventh city in terms of fastest growing tech jobs. Um, and this is something that's pretty important to me because when you think of Miami, you think of this place that's kind of like touristy and people go there to party, but there's a huge class disparity and um, it's gotten to the point where there's no middle class and there's a lot of people working jobs that aren't stable that don't pay well, that don't have benefits. And tech jobs are not those jobs. They're accessible, they pay well, it's a stable industry. And um, I think it's the sort of thing that could help Miami locals. You know, companies created by locals, employed by locals. So I'm really into that idea. And the fact that we don't have a digital map kind of, you know, made me want to create one. Um, so this is my logo, which you can't really tell very well, but it's like really obnoxious colors, like neon purple and, and neon teal. And I kind of wanted to create a logo that was both design conscious 
and reflected Miami's personality. Um, so I tried to achieve that with this logo. Um, so it's obviously a Rails app, but um, as you'll see, it's a super simple app. I wanted to create something that was very simple at the core, but that I could enhance by adding more complex fun functionalities as time passed. And um, one of the main things I use is the Google Maps API, which you'll see in a second. Um, JavaScript, super important. Uh, HTML and CSS, obviously. Actually, my framework was foundation. I decided not to go with Bootstrap because, I don't know, I wanted to do something different. Um, and then uh, I'll talk about the gems and the other things I used. Uh, deployed my app on Heroku and used GitHub very poorly, as my mentor can attest to that. Um, <laughs> I am terrible at naming my Git commits, so. <laughs> All right, let me show you my app. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And as I said, it's a big Google map. And as you can see, I have a list of all the companies that are out on the map, as well as the markers that show where they are. And um, you can actually, well, you can click on a company, or on a marker rather, and it'll give you a little information about the company. Uh, the name, a little short description. If you click on it, it'll show you the actual company page on my on my app in Made in Miami. And if you go to the side here, this I'm particularly proud of because it was really hard. Um, you can filter it by kind of the category. So I have different categories. Um, and obviously it's not working right. Oh, here we go. So I have digital companies, spaces and incubators, investors, and the companies that are hiring. And so if you click the checkbox, you can filter both on the map and on the list by the different category. Um, okay, so then say you are a business owner, like me, admin up here, you can go to add a new business. And when you go to add a new business, you can, uh, oh, that's Miami. Uh, you can enter in your information, name, address, website, your logo, a short description, and then the category under which it falls. And then it'll be added to the list of businesses. And here are some of the ones I put in. These are real businesses in Miami. And then once you have your business up, if you'd like, you can create a job posting because you think that all of the really awesome people looking for tech jobs are looking at Made in Miami. So you go to create a new job posting. You can put a job title, location, description, salary, and the business to which you want to add it to because you can add multiple businesses if, if you're all in like that or something. Um, so then here are the jobs. Um, and these are actual jobs, so if you're looking for a job in Miami, you can. And, okay. So actually, once you add a job um, to your company, it'll automatically be categorized under hiring, at which point, if you were to filter the map by the companies that are hiring, um, it'll show you those that are. And if you're an admin, or if, if you're a registered user, you can go to your desk, manage all of your businesses and your job listings. You can edit, delete them, etc. And okay, um, so actually, I, this is something that I think is feasible and will work. And I spent a whole dollar on a domain, so I hope it does. Um, <laughs> uh, for the future, I'd like to maybe add a, jo um, a job listing fee, like teeny tiny, so that, you know, in order to find the amazing talent that's looking at my website, you can, you, you'll have to pay a small fee. And um, I'd also be interested in adding an events calendar where um, people would be able to list tech events that are hosted at, at their business or elsewhere. Um, and that's it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, do not name your commits 
fixed shit because it really does not please anyone. So <laughs> um, that's it, yeah. Questions here? I understand you're all stunned at yeah. what app is. <laughs> That's great. I hear here wonderful. <laughs> okay, that's an opinion. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Christina. Congrats. Thank you. Order is super important. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Agnieszka, and, uh, and I would like to um, show you my application. Um, okay, my idea. Um, I wanted to do something that, it would be, that would be connected with my hobbies. Um, so I made application for climbers in Barcelona, Catalonia. And why? Uh, because people that go to climb, they, they always need company. This is not the sport that you would go alone. So if you want to go to climb to the mountain or you want to go to climb inside um, a gym, you always need company. So, uh, and organizing, it's really difficult uh, because sometimes your friends say that they will go over the weekend and then they party on Friday and then they don't go. Um, and organizing yourself on Facebook, it's kind of messy and nobody, nobody does it anymore, to be honest. Um, and it's for climbers, for people that want to climb, that want to go outside of Barcelona, um, that want to meet other people, they want to train uh, together, um, just for people that climb. Um, okay, this is the... <laughs> This is the um, logo made my, by my friend, <laughs> Caroline. Uh, and the webpage is called Puja al Peu. Uh, because this is the, if you climb uh, in Catalonia, this is the, the thing that you for sure know, that if you cannot climb higher, uh, somebody will shout to you, Puja al Peu. So put your feet up and you will, for sure you will climb more. Okay, so I will show you the application. I will make it smaller, I guess. Come on, shift that. Again? No. <laughs> Come on, shift that. Um, okay. Uh, well, you can't see the... You cannot see it, uh, the upper. Better? No. Well. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, it's working like this. Uh, well, you cannot see the up, the upper part. I don't know why. Um, okay, so it's constructed like this: that you have to uh, you have to log in in order to to use the application. You always can look at your profile. 
So this is this is me. Uh, you can delete or update the user only uh, only if you are the owner. Um, and uh, it's a, like I was thinking that the most important thing is to group the people by the level of their climbing, uh, because the most important thing for people that go to climb uh, is that they will be in a group of people that climb uh, at the same level, not much better, not much worse, uh, but just more or less the same. Uh, so that's why I have here the groups um, of, uh, of people that go together to climb. Uh, there is a, you can create a new group uh, when you are registered and logged in. Um, and, uh, and you can always join the group. The group has capacity. And uh, if it reaches the capacity of maximum capacity, you cannot join anymore. Uh, you have name of the group, you can see all the groups. Um, you have climbing level of the group, you cannot join if, uh, if you don't have the adequate climbing level and the name of the creator or you can as well see the people that, uh, that are within the groups, you can see them by their climbing level. So here we have Chris Sharma <laughs> and uh, you cannot delete or update the uh, profile. Uh, if you are not the, if you are not the creator, um, okay. So let's check out the group. I will see this one. Um, here we can see the members of the group, and uh, if we add the place uh, places uh, feature, you can uh, you can put to which place the group will go. So I added Montserrat, and if you add the place to the group. Later, you will see the group under the places. Um, so, and when you have a group, um, you can leave comments under the group. So, for example, let's go on Sunday, and why on Sunday? I want to go on Saturday. You can click at the, uh, the comments, and you can see the, what people said. Um, if you go to places, um, I will check Montserrat. Uh, you see the longitude and latitude of the place. You can add the picture. Uh, you see the groups that go to this place. So you can as well click and see which groups are going and who belongs to that group. Uh, and you can rate this place. Uh, I already rated the place and it's up to five. Beer. <laughs> Harras. <laughs> because everyone that climbs likes beer. Uh, <laughs> and as well I added the uh, I was using the gem, uh, geolocate, um, that it's showing the coordinates, uh, and then this gem is going to another one, uh, that is the API of Google Maps, and it's showing the place uh, on the map. So here we can see Montserrat. Um, this works for real places, or for example, uh, gems, like here I have Deudit's uh, place, rating, uh, as well location, coordinates, and uh, yeah, so what I like is that like everything is uh, connected with each other. It was really difficult for me to, um, to create connections between groups, uh, users, uh, comments, places. Um, and the first time I was checking out the another person profile, I realized that I can delete all the profiles. So I started again from, <laughs> uh, from that, like, the authorization, authentication and everything. Um, so yeah, like at this moment, like everything, it's working quite smoothly between each other, and uh, and yeah, this is how it's working uh, right now. Um, so let's go back to the. Uh, to my slides. Uh, so what will be next? Uh, for sure, I would like to um, maybe do it from scratch or refactor, really, <laughs> uh, and do testing. Because, well, I didn't, I have to admit that I didn't do testing, and I should have done. Um, uh, I would like to connect uh, as well calendar with events, uh, of climbing events, because I think for every person that is interested in climbing, this would be really interesting, that here and there we have this, this kind of event. 
Um, maybe connecting with a climbing store would be uh, interesting. Like for example, in Barcelona there is Barabes, uh, and like to have some discounts for people that would like to buy online from them. Um, putting videos, uh, videos explaining how to do what, uh, how to use the gear, um, maybe videos like GoPro videos that people can upload. Uh, and what would be nice to show the how to get to the climbing sectors, where to leave the car, uh, be able to draw the actual route from the parking to the climbing place. Yes, this will be next, I hope. Uh, tools I used, um, GitHub, very useful <laughs> and it's very useful to know how to use it because I remember I had situation that I went home thinking that two days of my work went to nothing and thanks to, thanks to Xavier, <laughs> I, I, I recuperated all the changes I did because the comet was waiting somewhere there for me. Um, Rails, um, CSS, uh, JavaScript, uh, HTML, and yeah, and Heroku to deploy the app, and RSpec to to test it a bit. <laughs> uh, what I learned? Um, I learned that coding it's like climbing, because uh, when you think about your project as a whole, 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 whole. Um, big impossible thing to achieve, you will never do that. Uh, so put like parsing it into small things and focusing only on one thing at the time uh, can really help you in putting the thing together and finishing. Uh, because on Tuesday last week, when, I, when we started to build our applications, I was thinking that I know nothing. I learned a lot, but I cannot use it and that I will never manage to build application and finish it. And I did that thanks to help of my colleagues that were always uh, willing to help and answer my questions. Uh, thanks to our TAs, uh, <laughs> Xavier and Nick, that were always helping. Um, and yeah, for like, thank you guys for everything. Uh, Iron Hack was really great experience, and I I will miss it. I will not know what to do with all my free time that I will now have. <laughs> Maybe I will be coming to to <laughs> to mob just to sit on Sunday evening. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Thank There's questions here. Yeah, one. one? Mm, yeah, oh. there's a one question. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> He's a friend. I hope. Hi. Uh, do you have any way to know what's your climbing level? Uh, because you can put any level. I don't yeah. Know. Uh, well, yeah, you can you can put any level. Uh, well, uh, some friends can troll you inside of the group uh, if you s subscribe and the, uh, and they will they will they will put like no 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 he's not climbing this level. Uh, well, it's like it, it will be based on people uh, people trust no because if you will say that you climb nine and you will go with people that climb nine, you will end up really uh, badly. <laughs> And they will laugh at you, so you know, like, no, you will not do that. <laughs> More questions? No? Thank you, Miska. Thank you. Congrats. <laughs> Perfect, so this is the last one. It is, no? Uh, and then remember that we, we have here Sergio uh, and he will uh, close the, the event. First time I take a, a micro. Uh, 
Uh, okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, my name is Jordi Domingo. Uh, I have a background uh, as a programmer, but many years ago, more than 20 years ago, I used to program in COBOL. I mean, maybe some of you have, have heard about it, but <laughs> it's not much use now. And then I, I quit this kind of job and I started doing other kind of, of boring jobs. And I got a moment that um, I was like very disappointed with, with my, the life I, uh, I was having and I decided to take a change. So that's why, why, why I'm here. I was looking since time ago for a, for a course like this. I, I wasn't able to find anything similar here in Spain. And luckily one day um, I found, I don't, I don't remember where, in a blog or some, somewhere else, uh, information about Ironhack. I wrote the formula and I really, I thought uh, oh, that's what I want because it's really actual. Uh, teachers are very, uh, people who are working with the last techniques. Uh, and it's 90% uh, practical. I had the idea to, to some ideas to, that I wanted to implement and, and I thought that this was the, the perfect way no? to, to build prototypes to be able to do it. Uh, the idea is to change my life, as, as I said to you, and in a way that I can be location independent or to become a digital nomad, that, uh, what they say now. So, uh, the application, it's called Nomadet. Uh, the, main, the main fact uh, is to connect uh, some actors that are teachers and, and venues where to, where to teach. And also, uh, I, will, I will add some, some more information. The students also can, can, can interact and, of course, we will build courses in the future. The reviews is the, is the main part of, the, of this of this application is the main utility. So what I try to do is, is just to, to with, through the reviews to, to valorate venues to teachers, teachers to venues, and and mostly to, to this kind of teachers or instructors for workshops to, to can be done like in places like MOP on well, small academies or uh, rural hotels like cooking courses, creativity courses, or this kind of, of things. Okay, let's see the demo. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this is the main page. Uh, still not a landing page, but you can see all the information. Maybe I should reload this now. Okay, with the map. And basically, uh, the, the main thing is to, to display information, to be able to, to add uh, reviews and show information about the, in this case, is a teacher, that category that, that belongs to the teacher. And if you are logging in, I cannot uh, comment this one because it's mine, but if I, if I come here, as you see, I can add a comment here, anywhere. Rating, in the future will be some stars. Okay, and that's it. Uh, what, what else? The categories is a very important Part from here, we, we can have as many categories as we want and as many levels as we want. Uh, the, this is well, the list of reviews in just for testing. The, the profile of, of, of the user. And this is to just to change the settings. It that is the same the same page that in the login. So if, if we log out, then we change. We cannot see some of the features. So basically, this is the, the application. It's still a lot of work to do, but uh, here you can show more or less what, what I pretend to do. So sorry, okay. Oops. 
Okay, what's what's it until now? Uh, okay, uh, I use this tool to to build the the core of the of the concept of the application. It's been very useful to to have a diagram with all the database because I've changed it a lot of times during the process. I've I've, I've been focused more in in this kind of structure to make something that uh, in the future can be uh, scalable and it can add more more features. No? So I have users, searches, categories, these kind of things. And then the main thing here is what we, what we learned. No? It's what we are, have come here to explain. Uh, I've learned a lot uh, from, from, of course, from all the, the teachers, from all the students, but also a lot from my mistakes, my own mistakes. No? So like, don't rush. I try to do everything too fast to have something running because we had so so few time uh, so then I, I, come, I, I had some some mistakes uh, that then I will explain uh, search for uh, when you have to do something I always search for examples as Ilya said the stack, stack overflow is a fantastic tool and um, spend time reading the documentation if you want to use a gem uh, I used to try to install and try it and and I start uh, quickly to, to use it, and it was a mistake. You must read carefully what, what, can you, what can you do and what you cannot do. Share and listen, that's uh, very, very important here. Uh, as everybody has told before, uh, we've been sharing all the time the, the knowledge, helping to solve many problems. Uh, in my case, I, I really think I, some of the other students deserve more than me to be here. They have helped me a lot. Uh, for example, you can see the, that nice logo. It's not in the website because it's Caroline has done it this lunch time today when, <laughs> when we know that we, I had to present. Uh, so sharing is very important and listening the advice of people who, who are more experienced than you is also very, very important. Uh, as many people have, been, have said, uh, break into small tasks, focus in one small task. Because if you don't it, you can get very desperate and frustrated, and and then this this way you you go step by step, and you you see that you you go somewhere, no? uh, one thing at a time, and use testing tools. I haven't used them enough, as I said, because I I I, I rush too much. More things that I've learned. Every every simple step that you that you do, everything that you want to add, that could be a map or categories or or relations reviews, you are, you 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 learn a lot of of new things. Uh, Ruby on Rails is the main tool that we have used. I, I like it. I love it. Uh, JavaScript also has been very interesting to learn. I like it. And CSS, I need it, so I use it. <laughs> but. <laughs> I fight with with it uh, all the time, and it takes really a lot, a lot of time um, to do things with it. And mainly, the, this is just the starting. We have a lot, of, a lot of things more to learn, and we try. Tools. Uh, I don't want to repeat what others have said. Uh, we have Ruby on Rails, JavaScript, HTML. Stack Overflow, Google Maps, Trello. Trello is to, to, to organize your, your job, what you have to do, what you have done, what is being done. It's very useful to split the, the work in small pieces. Cradle is uh, just uh, an online free tool to, to design the, this kind of databases that uh, are changing all the time. Mockflow to, to design some mockups. And a lot of help, of course, help from from the TAs, from the teachers, and from this, all the students that are all the time. It's really really nice to see that they are busy with with the project, but when you ask something, everybody is ready to 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 give some some piece of advice. Oops. Okay, next thing that I want to do uh, is. Maybe it sounds a little crazy, but uh, maybe I should restart from scratch. Now that I know all the problems that, I, that I've had, uh, how to build the, the database, how to, 
how to interact with JavaScript, with JSON, and these kind of things. Uh, would be very useful to restart again, doing testing from the beginning to, in order to get a clean code and something that can grow in the future. Uh, also, I have to improve, um, improve security and responsive, of course, and simplify the database before getting to the next steps. And, of course, add some features that there are tons of them, uh, but I didn't put all of them here because, you know, in a slide, it's not very nice to see a lot of information. <laughs> but uh, this would be uh, like I want to, to build the, the database at the end. Uh, I want to add courses, stack relations, uh, network, social network information, offers boards, uh, also, the courses are uh, a very important part because the idea is to, to build a parallel uh, platform to sell the courses. And so, but, in, but in fact, it will be everything interacting. Uh, so that's all. Uh, thanks very much. I, thank, I can say thank you again to, to all the organizers, to Xavi, the teacher assistants, Nick and Xavier and Ben that was with us the first two or three weeks. All the teachers from, from all this kind of fantastic companies that I have been here. And uh, my colleagues, uh, that's the, the, the most uh, nice thing of this, of this course is what, what we've shared in this, they say 400 hours, that I, but I think that have been more than 500 <laughs> at the end. In eight weeks, it's a lot, a lot of time and a lot of sharing, of knowledge, oh, well, of pizzas, of beers, wine, maybe I shouldn't say. But <laughs> but so thank you very much, and that's all. So, questions? Him, Mr. Jordi, yeah. Oh, the, the, the question is, uh, you have the, the site hosted in a public site, like a Oku or, or something like that, or, or is, uh, or you plan to? Well, I, I, I haven't, I haven't deployed the still to a, to a, to a site. I was concentrated in, Make uh, made it work today, <laughs> but yes, the next step is to, to I will try to validate the model, just to have first of all improve the this, the the visual design that as you can see can be really improved, and and then to, to to try the business model and if I see that there are some possibilities, then next steps, step by step. But yeah, I, I want to 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 as soon as possible to to publish it in in some hosting. Any more questions? If you have the domain, nobody has a Yes, of course, the first thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have 15 domains, more or less, so did it? Yes, okay. No, the, the, really, the, the idea came where, where, while we were doing the course. I had another domain, it was like Nomad Teachers, but I didn't like too long and I found this one and luckily it was it was free strange <laughs> more questions? any more questions no so thank you very much okay. you thank you everybody He doesn't need the computer anymore. <laughs> Start it. So now we have the um, our special keynote. Uh, and Sergio Gago is currently the come here. He's the CTO of Rocket in Spain. I think it's better if you introduce yourself. He's a nomad there as well. Not now. Was. He was. <laughs> Just find out the 
complicado. All right. So before I start, I was actually taking mental notes of uh, what I've been, what I've been seeing. Uh, really cool learning points here. But um, the most interesting part of, of uh, your projects today is that iron hack programs and the like are actually like pretty much like real life. So you know some technologies, you know some stuff, and then you get into a project that you know shit about it, and uh, you have about one sprint or two to make something that the client can see and touch. So that's pretty much real life, and that's what you're going to find in, uh, in the future in your life. So if, if there's some, some uh, winners today, it's you guys. So I, I want to just ask. That, that's really nice work. In eight weeks, making something like that, and learning a uh, completely new technology and, and way of doing things. So that's really cool. So um, Xavi was asking me, can, can you certainly come and, and say something after the project? These guys are going to be very, very tired, willing to go home or going for beers, most likely. And um, so I was saying, what, what can I say? What can I tell them? Um, at, the, at the end of the day, I don't know much about many things. Um, but, but he said, well, you're now about to come into the web development world or software engineering or programmer world, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I was actually thinking, well, I was, and I am a very bad developer, and that's a nice thing. Uh, one of the things is because all the history that I, that I had before, what my teachers told me in the past, and what your clients also made you a little bit. And I, I tried to learn a thing of two about what are the mistakes or the uh, uh, bad learning points that with experience you, you get to learn. So I call them the four amendments and this is what I'm going to talk about it today. Uh, briefly just about myself, I'm currently the CTO of Rakuten Spain uh, since a week ago. I'm actually leading all the technology on the European marketplaces as well. Uh, but Actually, my real life is a scuba dive instructor and the nomadic life and all that, which is my real profession. All this computer thing is just a hobby. Uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've been actually, before working for big companies like Rakuten and stuff like that, I, I've been trying to work in the startups where I have all the freedom and, and, and you have all the mistakes to do by yourself and less bureaucracy and politics and stuff like that. But you have time for one thing, uh, one thing at a time. So now it's kind of a bureaucratic job. Anyhow, if I, um, if I forget to mention it later on, I'm hiring developers in Barcelona. So I'm going to try something, um, uh, uh, a little experiment. Maybe it fails, so please bear with me. Um, what I'm going to ask you is, now, we have here a really nice uh, audience that knows a lot about uh, about web development technologies, right? Yeah? Is that right? How many developers in the room? Please hold your hand. OK, quite a few. We have double developers in the room. OK, so I'm going to ask you to just shout out loud any keyword that for you relates somehow to web development. Like I have here three examples, PHP, Node.js, JavaScript. And uh, I'm going to be, if this allows me, no, it doesn't because I don't have Wi-Fi. Can I connect somehow? Yeah, I, I was encountering this, sorry. Okay, here we go. All right, so we have Ruby, PHP, Node, JavaScript. What else? Angular. Django. <laughs> what else? Elasticsearch. Elastic. I'm going to say yes, elastic. Edge. Backbone. What? Backbone. Backbone. Spring. Python. Greenfire. What? Greenfire. Huh? What's that? <laughs> Okay, I want to check that one. <laughs> <laughs> Scala. 
Ela? Rails. Rails, of course. <laughs> Red Chef. Come again? Red Chef. Red Chef? Yeah. What else? Nginx. Nginx, all right. Jason? Jason. Apache. Apache. GitHub. GitHub, yeah. Any technology tool, uh, IDE, whatever, whatever works. Jenkins. Jenkins. Browserify. Browserify. Anything else? Eclipse. Eclipse. Wow. Uh, okay. Okay. Travis. Travis. Oh, Travis. Yeah. Anything else? I have a lot of us, I don't know which. <laughs> <laughs> In the next action. Next, next. I'm missing, I don't know, I'm missing CSS, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. You're not missing CSS. <laughs> That's it? JQuery. JQuery, yeah. Laravel. Laravel. Bootstrap. Bootstrap. Yes. <laughs> Very web development oriented. <laughs> okay, let, let's let's stick here. I think we have a nice collection of what we would call. Uh, I'm gonna put a few more. I'm gonna put Go. Uh, it's a nice one today. I'm gonna put a uh, Haskell. I've heard before Cobol. Yeah, I know about Cobol. Uh, and I know that all. Oh. Oh yeah, Flash. And now that you mentioned Cold Fusion, Mongo, Java. I mean, it's the same. Java, Mongo. I've heard. Swift. Swift. Come on, come on. Just the last, the last two ones. Objective C. Some real development. CGI. Where is Postgres? Better look. Two more. Two more. Next. Visual Basic. Yeah. <laughs> X, Juta, S. This and Visual, can I put just .NET? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. The real one. Well visual Basic and .NET. That's it. That's we, it. We All right. So uh, now what I'm going to do is... Microphone. <laughs> okay. Enough, enough. <laughs> do we have any hashtag for, for the year today? Oh, uh, do we have any hashtag? So I'm going to share this uh, uh, brief form with you. And by this way, by, by, by the, this way I can get some followers. <laughs> All right. And also you can access with that URL up there. Um, so what I, if you access there, Please, you can do now. Uh, otherwise, this is not going to work. Um, you will find three um, three questions. Have you heard about the technology? So at least there's going to be one person who will say yes. Have you actually used the technology? Let's say used for more than a couple of hours or more than writing a hello world. And do you plan to use the technology in the future, or do you foresee you will be actually using it for production or for, for, for your daily work. So now let's take just one minute to do it. Let, let me do mine here. Okay, Ruby, I've used it, used it, used it, used it, used it. Nope. What, one per row. Oh, brain fact, plan to use it for sure.
All right, so if this works properly, and it might not work properly, we should be seeing your results now here. Bitly one upper E, I, H, upper P, and Q. There's a conclusion for this, I promise. In Rakuten, we love Excel. Okay, here we go. So, what we should be seeing, uh, if possible in real time, apparently, is that we're gonna see some technologies that you mentioned. Some of those were a joke, but it's actually fine. Uh, most of them, we've heard of them because we're kind of aware of what's going on. Um, only a few of us will have been using some of those technologies, and less than that are gonna be planning to use those technologies. So if this was working fine, which I don't think it is, um, let me check again. Yeah, now I know what's happening. All right, that looks a little bit different. So you can see two trends. One that goes up and then down, and one that goes down and then stays down. Uh, the one that goes down and stays down probably is the C++ kind of a family of languages, while the one that goes up probably we're talking about uh, Ruby or uh, Angular, Node, Elastic, all those kind of keywords. So the key thing is, first, how to discover which technologies are the ones that are interesting for us to learn for the future. And second, what the heck about technologies? So we've, been, we've said about 42 different keywords, but each of them has a whole stack of documentation and are probably quite complicated to use or integrate in our, in, in our stack. So how do you cope with all that? How do you really uh, use it for your daily job? That's pretty tough. Uh, you, you were saying that we are in a civil uh, profession. This is not civil. We have to be learning all the time. So my first demand then would be tools are just tools. What it means is that at the end of the day, today you have been learning Ruby, but tomorrow we will have something completely different that has nothing to do with Ruby, what Ruby can solve. Probably you were solving lots of cool stuff with Cobol in the past. But nowadays, we can do exactly the same thing with, with a fraction of the time. But we don't have to focus on the technology or the tool itself. We have to be very agnostic on, that, on, on those kind of things. Let me put you an example. Uh, how many people here is, uh, can actually code in Node? All right, not many, but it's good. Now, don't take me wrong here. I actually like Node a lot, but let me tell you something, there was chat rooms a long time before Node appeared. So your first Hello World application, your, your tutorial on, on how to learn Node is how to build a chat room. That's the typical one. But 
Well, back in the year 2000, even before, we did have chat rooms. It was the only reason I could talk with girls. So the business need, the requirement at that time, was already there. Why are we building this? That is already a solved problem. Uh, the same thing, there was rich media, there was uh, um, kind of agency things before as well. I don't know if you heard about something called Comet a few years ago. That was supposed to be hype, that was supposed to be awesome. And now we have, of course, all the real-time web and all that. So my point here is, of course, Node is awesome because it allows us to do many cool things in less time, uh, being able to scale it up much better, to work better with our, with, with our team, with integrating them with different technologies. But the business requirement, the need, was already there since a long time ago. We just kind of reinventing the wheel a little bit. And that's not a bad thing. So where are we going? Where, as, as uh, professionals, as the career of software engineers, web developers, or however you want to um, talk about it. Where are we going? I prepared myself a plan B in case my first graph didn't work. So uh, I prepared a few graphs on how the US market is actually behaving. Uh, it's actually worldwide, but uh, indeed is very biased on the, on the US uh, job market. This is the job uh, market growth uh, of any job offer that had Ruby on, on it. So of course you can see that we had our great time and now we're stagnating a little bit. My guess is in a few years from now, hopefully many uh, years from now, it will start declining, declining. Exactly the same that happened with PHP. Now PHP is not that cool. Still in production there is many, many, many companies using it, but when you look for actual job offers, mainly in the US, Spain is a little bit different, you get, you, you get to see a decline, C++, <laughs> Java. Now, this is a very interesting one. Worldwide, Java job offers are declining a big deal. But if you do demogra dem demographics on how many uh, languages are, uh, or what's the most spoken programming language in Barcelona, it's actually Java. And where people have the most expertise in programming languages, is it still Java? Yeah, look what happens with the job offers. I guess everyone is moving to Ruby. Node.js, very interesting, on the hype. Scala, Python, kind of stable since the last uh, few years. JavaScript, well, it seems that not, people is not looking for JavaScript specifically anymore, but more about its frameworks. HTML5, well, since we put the five at the end. CTO, well, this is bad news for me. Uh, so my second amendment is being geeky is quite okay. Uh, all, all the GitHub community, Stack Overflow, uh, let's go to, to bar camps and, and, and to conferences and, and, and do the, the programming thing because that's what makes us good developers. But that's not all about it. Um, in order to try to shed some light about this, I always take the example on, uh, on, on doctors, on medical doctors. So in medicine, you study, you get your, your uh, medical degree after so many years. And then of course, you have to keep updating yourself forever. Kind of our profession as well. Now, how do you consider who is a good doctor? Who's a good medical doctor? Is it the one who works in the best hospital with the latest technology, with the latest uh, um, machine that does things inside your butt? Probably not. Probably the best doctor is the one who knows what to do in a fraction of a second, even if he doesn't have the, the latest technology at hand, is the one that has the, 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 the biggest uh, knowledge or, or know-how on how to do, what to do, in, what, in which moment with the resources he has at hand. So if we apply that to our profession, what is the ultimate goal of an engineer in general, a software engineer? Any ideas? Solve problems? That, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So. The software engineer is to solve 
business problems, and by business I don't mean only capitalism problems, but uh, create value to people, to companies, to society. In fact, there's a lot of discussion lately about what are the ethics or what are supposed to be the ethics of, of, uh, of our profession and what are we supposed to do. But at the end of the day, it's not about what language you speak, what technologies you use, or what do you do for, uh, for uh, making that comment or not. It's about what value are you, are you providing to the company. And it doesn't matter what, what uh, methodology you use, you, you use Agile or, or uh, uh, Waterfall or whatever. What you need to do is to release something that works. And everything else stays within us. So when I speak with, all my, uh, with the rest of the stakeholders in Rakuten, I try to be, uh, my profile is a little bit hybrid. So I have one leg in business and the other leg is, is in, on, on IT. I'm actually an engineer by, by, by education. But most of my job is speaking with the main stakeholders, with the CEOs and, and, and people like that who know shit about technology. But I cannot tell them, no, what we need is to um, refactor for three weeks. That's something that we need to know ourselves because it's what, what the product needs. But we have to convert it into a business value generation. And that's very difficult to understand from the engineering point of view. But it's at the end of the, at the, end of the day, the goal of our profession. So if the technology changes, what, is what, what can we hold on to? What is what we can do? What we will be doing in 10 years from now? So if, you, if, if you're into physics, of course, you always have your baseline, your, your, the laws of physics that might change over time, but maybe not, but not every day. Or not, at least not with the speed our technology has changed. If you're a doctor, you have, I don't know, the anatomy, the, the shape of the body, the bones are always in the same place, but that doesn't apply to us. Our things change over time very, quick, very, quick, very quickly. So the problem is that when you go to a company in a few years from now, you're going to see exactly how much value are you going to be able to provide. And then it comes the law of repetition. And this is something that I find many, many times when I'm recruit recruiting people. Is people saying in, in their CVs, no, I've been six years in this company doing Java. So I have six years of experience. Unfortunately, no. You have one year repeated six times. And if our ultimate goal is to solve problems, but you've been solving exactly the same problem over and over again, first, you're drawing your career to the drain. And second, you're not solving any new problem. This was said by uh, uh, a very famous uh, judo uh, sensei, not exactly in this context, but uh, I, I'm not sure if he knew about programming at that time. So of course there is things that we can hold onto, and that's what I call the third amendment. Uh, our very basics, and these are in fact some things that in university, not always teach, or at least not properly. That was one of the reasons why I dropped off. Um, these are kind of skill things. They are plain or agnostic on the, any language or technology you use. So if you know about how data structures work, what is a list, what is a collection, what is an array, what is a hash, how do they differentiate themselves, and when to use each one, then, of course, in one language there's going to be brackets, and the other is going to be parentheses, and in the next one is going to be by smoke signals. But that doesn't matter, because the structure behind is the same thing. The same happens with design patterns. Proper design patterns are the only way that I can go to my colleagues in Japan, and I can tell them, okay, the architecture, the architecture for this is going to be a, a, an abstract factory with a single tune around, and they're going to understand perfectly what I'm talking about. Maybe they code uh, with any sheet afterwards, but that doesn't matter. Algorithms, methods, processes, as you, uh, as you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel if you, if you don't want to. But there are several methods to optimize your processes that are already out there. Uh, libraries, frameworks. The community provides many gems, frameworks, applications, open source or not, but people pushing our limits, making the ads a little bit further from our side. So we can use that in order to increase our tool set. If the only tool you have is a hammer, what happens is that all your problems are going to be nails. So 
if the only thing you know is one very specific language, if you only program in PHP, everything is going to be solvable by PHP. If you only program in Ruby, everything is going to be uh, fixable by Ruby on Rails. But if you have a broad understanding on what's happening, what's going on, maybe you can make the, the call to say, all right, maybe this chat room is better built in Node.js. I might not be the biggest expert on Node, but I think I can learn and I can build something cool with this and it's going to be much more efficient. That was the first amendment. Also know your physical limits. And by this I'm not saying how many hours you can code per day, but where your code is going to be running. Your code is going to be in one server. Virtual or not, it's going to have one CPU or several in the back. So you want to know what's the, the, the input output things, uh, how memory behaves, how your CPU is, is behaving in that sense. And again, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that you need to be the best system administrator all around and that you need to, I don't know, optimize that to, to, to the uh, micro, uh, micro byte or that you need to program in C and do pointers in memory allocation. But it, that, that's the scaffolding where you're building your staff into. Then you have to be a little bit of a jack of all trades. Your code, if you're a back-end developer, for example, is not going to be running by itself. That's not the application. Same thing if you're a front-end. Same thing if you're a DBA. Same thing if you're a DevOps. That's going to be happening in a context. And so if you're a back-end, that code is going to have to factor with uh, some front-end code, maybe in Angular, maybe in whatever scripting language you want to use. And you have to work together with that. So if you stick, speaking about objects, stick in your modularity, encapsulated in your own uh, chair and computer, then we're kind of back to the cubicle uh, era. So you have to understand what is going to be the context, and then you will be able to use your resources better. And then finally, I've been saying not reinvent the wheel. Well, sometimes you do have to reinvent the wheel. And that's not a bad thing. That's something that everyone tells you, no, no, no. Probably there's a jam for that. Well, but maybe you do have to reinvent the wheel because you don't have to trust me. Uh, you, you can trust Croc4, who is uh, one of the main uh, JavaScript evangelists out there. If you want to go to some of the biggest JavaScript conferences, he will probably be there. Uh, he at some point say that the good thing about reinventing the wheel is at some point you might even get a round one. And uh, if we never reinvented the wheel, we could stay with the chat rooms uh, in the Terra era and uh, not, not need for any node applications or for any sockets or anything like that. So, and finally, the fourth amendment, your personality traits. So up until now, I've been saying what do you need to know? What are the basics around? What do you have to focus? But of course, there's a way that you need to behave or a way that you have to carry yourself in order to be a good developer. Now, the thing is, up until now, it is fairly easy to become a programmer. I mean, you can just take uh, a couple of years and then become a decent programmer or do a few courses and be able to code a little bit. And that allows you to put code on, a, on, on, on some IDE and probably it is going to run but not necessarily that makes you a good programmer or the ages. So one of the first thing is uh, improvise, adapt, and overcome. Yeah, this is from the movie. So we try to say this like red, green, refactor. Uh, it came kind of handy. No, but really it's, it's more like improvise, adapt, and overcome because in five years from now, it is not that likely that you're going to be using Rails or at least the same rails that we know today. The same Angular that we knew a few months ago is not going to be the same Angular that you will, have, you will be using in a few months from now. Um, so you're going to have to improvise. You will, you will get a problem, a challenge, that you will need to solve. And then you are going to have to adapt the know-how, the knowledge you have from before, from maybe past languages, from my time in Java, from my time in C++, probably some things are still there, the basics that I mentioned before. And you're going to have to overcome those problems. So, and just to summarize, I'm not finishing. You're going to need to be, to teach yourself, self-taught. 
Because most of the problems are, as you mentioned, in Stack Overflow, in Google, in books. You can go to courses, you can go to conferences, you can go to, to college, you can go to these many places. But if you are to keep yourself updated all the time, if you don't teach yourself, and sometimes you teach yourself by teaching others as well, then you're going to have a short career in development. You need to be persistent, not only in finding bugs, but also in, in keeping updating yourself and, uh, and uh, refactoring when even it doesn't need to and all that. Connecting the dots, this is nothing to do with Steve Jobs. It's about remembering, reminding the code you wrote five months ago that probably now you think is crap and seeing how it's going to relate with what you're writing today and what the intern code uh, coded uh, last year that he put on the, on, the, on the repo and then everyone forgot about it and then how that relates with that thing that the system administrator told you about that memory leakage of your code but nobody fixed. So not only about the code itself but on how you interrelate everything, the work that the front end uh, has to do the requirements from the client, the requirements from your CEO, and all together. And you have to be meticulous about saying, no, I'm doing the unit test before coding the, fun the function. If I get one euro every time I hear that. Community driven is the same thing as before. It's not about being rock stars or Ninja, Ultra, developers from heaven. No, it's about we as software engineers, how we can make this thing better. How I can provide for the community so the community provides to me and leaving the ego a little bit behind. And one of the nice things when you get this is that for many years that you've been developing something, you can still learn a lot of things. Even from the intern who just came as a freshman. And that's completely fine, because our, our industry grows so fast that it doesn't matter that you have been 10 years here. It's very likely that you have some, somebody with one year experience who's going to know more than you. So just to wrap up, just don't worry, because it takes time. And, and, and mainly for, for you guys uh, from, from uh, these eight weeks, now you can go to, for the beers. Uh, this is just the starting. And now you get a really nice scaffold and a really nice baseline of knowledge, but then it's about building on top of that, about what, what you want to create on your jobs, on the different problems, on the different clients you get, different projects, different challenges. And if you make sure and you're persistent, then you will get slowly into this career path. And I, I don't think anybody is actually perfect on that. Everyone is far from it. But that's what I foresee or what I think is the, the good um, engineering or software engineering path or yeah, engineering in general because at the end of the day this applies to a bridge engineer or anything like that. So thank you very much for your listening and uh, of course if you have any question you're more than welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. It was incredible. Uh, so, let's start with questions. Who want to be the first? I'm sure you have questions. Maybe our students? <laughs> Come on. Who is the first? Heidi? No? <laughs> Come on, guys. I want some questions. It's okay, they are shy. Yeah. <laughs> They're amazed. Did you say that I am hiring developers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here. What new technology do you have your eye on right now that's very interesting this week? This week? <laughs> it's actually finishing. This week, I, my, all my mind is in budget. 
and in Excel files. <laughs> Um, now, uh, lately we are actually looking a lot into Scala and Go uh, because we've, we believe that most of the problems can be solved quicker by functional programming. To be honest, that's something that I'm, I'm not that much into at the moment, but um, we are starting to put some programs in place for training and for doing spikes on could this be more efficient or not, this is specific API or this is specific process and, 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 and things like that. Uh, the nice thing about a company like Rakuten is that we have so many things all around that we almost have the best problem for each technology. So we have things that can be fixed really nicely with Node, things for Scala, things that actually are great with Java, like some APIs and some, some services. So at the end of the day, we can cover the whole the spectrum. I think I think they have questions, but they they want to ask uh, in petit comité. So let's start on it working. Uh, so remember, we have here the the um, the, the mob cafe, and for sure, no. Thank you very much for the people of the of the mob for hosting us here, Pablo, who who made a, a big a big effort today uh, preparing these things. <laughs> He, he probably wants to present a little bit about about uh, the mob. Thank you very much, Sergio, for sure, for, for this amazing talk. And then remember, uh, we will be here, um, and for sure in two weeks, we, we will have a, a, a next uh, hack show with our OAS uh, guys that finish their bootcamp. It's two weeks? No, three weeks. Three weeks, no? Two, two weeks? Yeah, they're tired. <laughs> three weeks? Yeah, three weeks. So thank you very much again uh, to all of our students and, and the mob. Uh, you should explain a little bit who is the mob and what are you doing here and where are the beers? <laughs> well, uh, the beers are in the upstairs and, and you will see it later when I will over. I will steal you only a few minutes. Well, um, what is mob? Uh, it's a pretty weird thing uh, in, a, in a good way uh, because the closest thing that you could know it's a, a co-working uh, a co-working space but mob it's not exactly a co-working space we could call it a co-working community because it's not only an office that you rent and you come to work but it's 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 also a place where where uh, you come here to meet other people that are in the same situation that you are, if you are starting your company or something. So the thing is not only come here to work, but to to make a community of people uh, alike. So it's not only an office, it's also a campus. This is the campus zone. And and we like to call it, uh, 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 it's a word that we have used a lot, but it's very fun. Uh, I really like it. It's a, a, a creative lasagna, because there are many things on it. and. In all, it's together, and and we make some weird things that that it's pretty cool to be here. So people people that are, are being here, Iron Hack know it. Uh, for us, it's very important to do some education here because the future is not only about companies, but also people that are. In, investigating on things I don't have they are investigating we also have some entrepreneurship students and and we think it's very important to to research and and find other ways of working and we think it's very important also to to create some relationships between people that are upstairs and people that are downstairs because we never know what can happen between if we if we mix a designer and a developer it can be a very crazy thing and 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 the mathematic and i don't know more things we have more fun we'll have so and now i will explain you what is fab cafe uh, fab cafe it's let's say the cafe of mob and and it's a uh, we we can say that at mob we are really geek we're really geek of technology you have seen uh, the iron hacks and that's why we created a, a well we didn't create it because it's a network that already exists in the world 
and it's a, a digital fabrication cafe. Well, what, what is this? Well, it's very easy. It's generally a place where you can have a coffee and you can also print in 3D or use the laser cutting, which is a very crazy thing and it's fun. And, and well, it's... We already have the, the companies, the, we have the students and all the things that happen here and we added a little bit of technology, of, of new technologies that can have a very crazy use. So uh, welcome to MOP and thanks for coming and to this crazy community and thank you very much. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much all of you for coming and see you in a few big weeks. Okay.